doing it. I'm not sure if that was right. he he was he refused. Um, maybe he wasn't. He was yeah. like uncomfortable about it. But um, there's when he's when they first show him in his apartment, he has like a cigarette in the ashtray, or you can you can see the smoke, but you never see him actually smoking. Everyone else, everyone else, I think is is smoking like heavily in this. But him yeah. Yeah, and. Yeah. yeah right um but i thought that was very interesting that he is the one you can even see him he, he he puts one in his mouth when he's talking to mo i think the first time and then they cut to another shot and it, it's um it's out of his out of his mouth you know and it's lit but you never actually see him engaging in the actual um yeah. gesture yeah yeah this is just some touch i wonder if I, 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 I take it up to Stallone not being a smoker. Just, you know, I'm not sure at I this time if, a, if they had like the herbal cigarettes that, you know, like the fake right. cigarettes that they, right. everybody can smoke on set or not. Um, because I know Chris said in the good, the bad and the ugly that, uh, Clint was re- really hated those cigarellas smoking those all the time because they were actually, they were real <laughs> and he's a non, right. non smoker. So, um, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, extremely. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I just think this is a great movie. Um, it's not talked about a lot. Uh, you know, I, you know, these sort of forgotten films, like um, the, the ones um, uh, a League of Their Own, which is the ones you guys did a few weeks ago. This, I mean, like these are great gems from the '90s that I don't think get talk about yeah the uh the 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 the, the 90s are were a beautiful time you know it was a time when we were were growing up and uh well it's a time where uh, i feel like it's a time where we were examining our history in a way that we're doing now i mean if you i mean like uh if you look at all the things that were going on in the 90s with uh, political correctness was sort of like uh, 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 reaching its height, and you had like all these, all this flex of art, and you had stuff like the hip hop music, which wasn't, you know, I mean, you know, it's uh, not to rag on the music of today now, but like the '90s era of hip hop, like they were trying to uh, void. I mean, like they were, they were using their pain in their lives to voice. <laughs> Uh, justification for their, you know, um, existence, you know, and they were trying to let everybody know, like, what was going on in these sort of uh, corners of the world that just get often dismissed and and, uh, rooted to statistics. And you had, you know, like, the third wave feminist movement was prominent in the 90s, and it was about, like, um, uh, what a what a woman's uh, uh, a quote unquote role was in a modern in a modern society post the second wave of feminism where you know that uh, uh, was all about you know equal rights in the workplace and stuff like that and uh, Kaitel's wife to uh, Peter Berg's wife like they're both miserable and they both just don't know what to do anymore you know like they feel like they're trapped in this never ending cycle of you know abuse and oppression you know that was something that was uh, prevalent uh, going on in you know even with um, yeah like there was a lot of stuff going on in the nineties that I don't think gets it gets its due and it gets uh, discussed yeah you know. yeah we're talking about the women in the film uh, Janine Garofalo was a uh, it was. It was pretty strange seeing her. Co- I had forgot that she comes out as the deputy, and um, first of all, she was really good in this, and the, and she kind of shows how the men they're not just racist or, or shitty, but they're also shitty to to women because she's totally passed off the entire film, and until she just kind of packs up and leaves and says, you know what, like I don't want any part of this anymore, you know. Um, right. And, and I, it's, yeah, I it's, felt like that was a great kind of subplot there that um, that's important. Yeah, yeah, because it shows how you know, like then I mean, like if you aren't a part of the boys' club, you're just left out, and your life is you know, 
you know, and like even even Freddie, who is a part, who who is who wants to be in on the boys club, is just miserable. Yeah, he yeah, feels. I think this is a great move. Yeah, it is. I I wish people hopefully people start recognizing it uh, more, especially with Mangold coming, kind of resurrecting Indiana Jones again. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully his filmography becomes uh, you know more apparent at least uh, within the next few years while that film is is his new film is relevant. Um, Copland is 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 great and deserves to a lot more attention and um i feel like uh even though i think stallone did win i forget what award it was but he did win something so he was praised but he should have gotten nominated for this definitely yeah uh, but yeah i think it's a great um i think it's a great film i think uh, uh people should 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 see it uh uh but i gotta run but uh, 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 thank you for uh, uh, bringing um, uh, me on, Wesley. Okay, Thanks again. Of course. Um, uh, hopefully, we can get you on again soon. Yes, soon. Yes, please. All right, man. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. So, some quick swan facts for you guys. Um, Sylvester Stallone actually put on 40 pounds in order to play the role of Freddy. Um, John Travolta, Tom Cruise, and Tom Hanks were all considered for the role of Freddy as well. Um, actress and comedian Janine Garofalo did not want to do this film at first until she re- uh, realized that it was a James Mangold production. Um, which led her to sign on without even reading the script once once over um and then our final swan fact was or is um method man uh of made famous by wu-tang and of course the solid um solo career he's had a stint in in the uh, movie industry for for a long time with the wire how high um tons and stuff actually but he makes a cameo in Copland um, as a uh, a perp who pretty much assaults one of the cops in a way that you're going to have to check out the film if you haven't seen it in a while or maybe uh, you haven't seen it at all yet um, check out the film I don't want to spoil it for you It's it's a pretty great part but yeah Method Man comes out in this film um and that wraps up the uh copland episode um if you are listening to this um this episode as a standalone and you don't know who we are we are drop the mic we operate out of san diego california we release new content every single weekend Uh, different movie reviews pop culture news weekly recommendations what have you just a general pop culture podcast Um, we've been doing this for about four years or a little bit over that Um, check us out give us that uh, subscribe Um, wherever you listen to podcasts we should be on there i know we are on um luminary now so if you have a luminary account please uh check out the show on there um thank you guys all for listening so much uh i love copland uh not a big fan of the police so to speak but uh i do love this film for what it is check it out solid performances all around um And just a great trip back to the 90s. Check it out. Very important stuff. Uh, It's streaming now on Pluto TV. Just like I said in the write-up. You can check it out on Pluto for free if you'd like. Um, Yeah. Everyone be safe out there until next week. Uh, James Warney, my co-host... was not able to make it uh for this episode obviously um so we will get back to him to see what film 
he would like to discuss um, next week. So it'll be a surprise. Um, So sorry out there for people who want to know ahead of time. So until next time, thank you guys so much. Thanks to CJ. Uh, As always, coming on um, and just killing it every time. The Contrarian, shout out to him. Um, Yeah. Go support uh, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, which is coming out this weekend. Um, Should be a blast. Yeah, until next time. I see cops who lose their way every day, and I don't like that. Because their ambivalence is contagious. They infect those around them. They're like maggots. When you find one, you find a nest. And I take that real personally. I went to the same academy as our friend there. Ray, good man. I stood by him at graduation. He was a beauty. He'd be good to me. Yeah, a real collar man. To the cop that he was, to his memory, I am loyal. But through the fog of my loyalty to the men, the evidence makes me see, and these days what I see, like an island out of my reach. I see this beautiful island shining through this fog house financed by one of two mob banks. That's right, Sheriff. What I see is your town. No. No, you don't see that.